Hey, some of my in commercials, too. <laughs> hey. No, sir. You didn't strike any deals for us to make any money, like doing Cheerios commercials or <laughs> no, Fruit no. Loops or Frosted Flakes or Loops? Great idea, but no, sir. Oh, no. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Fruit Loops. Man. Fruit Loops. My wife told me I had a Fruit Loops. She said, too much sugar in my special candy Fruit Loops.
There are six members present. Uh, Mr. Jones is not present. The county administrator is without card, finance officer, assistant county administrator, call card, county attorney, EMI, junior, IT director, Jamie Schumacher, emergency services, board member, board tables, and the state assistant, Mrs. Lamb. Those are respect for the number of people <coughs> together in the social distancing. Not all of these people are in the room at the same time, but all the other ones we do. We are as best as we can to measure the meeting size and social distancing. Folks will be <coughs> by roll call with a show of hands. An individual number of folks being recorded in the minutes. Uh, the family, uh, Staff of the Education Federal Regents. Okay. So, before you, Regents is returning to the Alvin Cohen and the Plank of Rachel Hodge to come actually invest upon this meeting. We pray in all by the God to the best that we can, the best that we can. We pray in all by the God to the best that we can. We pray in all by the God to the best that we can. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. 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 And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our first item of business is to uh, discuss, consider, and hopefully take action, if appropriate, on an ordinance, providing a, mess, a method to assure Continuing in our government during this um, COVID-19. Um, yesterday, we some changes. Did some fair with some other, we've done a lot of work and a lot of, we want to make sure we use the one we have that make corrections on it. While, while he's getting these documents for you straightened out, let's go to number three. To discuss, consider, and take action if appropriate on a policy pertaining to the fact that COVID-19 uh, makes it unsafe to assemble in one location a quorum for public bodies, including Board of Supervisors, School Board, Planning Commission, Board of Zoning Appeals, Board of Equalization, and all other local and regional boards, commissions, committees, and authorities created by either board or council, to which the board or council appoints all the portion of its members collectively and individually for public entities to conduct meetings. So what we're doing here is what we're having done right now is we're videoing and it's on our website and on our agenda so folks can come in to uh, look at and watch our meeting. Uh, for public comment time, we're developing a plan that again is in the papers of course, getting copies of y'all for, uh, to where people will be given an opportunity to either send in questions or comments for a public hearing. With that, they would state which public hearing they're commenting for and their comments, and we're limited to 500 words or no more than three minutes because they also can. Call, email or call it in and we can put them on the agenda where they can publicly speak to you through the system. So that would be eliminated again for three minutes. Uh, they all have to register to do this by noon the day of the meeting so we can get it scheduled in. But this is a way that you all can get an opportunity to pretty much be legal too with giving the public the um, pleasure of being able to address the public hearings. The other issue or in the whole document is public comments during the meeting. During the meeting. You all have um, already, um, the bylaws have been suspended 
or anything that we have to do differently. Do you all want us to go through this with allowing the public, you know, public comments at regular meetings right now, or do you want to suspend that until we get through this emergency declaration? I think we should suspend it. <laughs> but we can keep it in the electronic way that we're talking about. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Uh, so we have not. Excuse me. Anytime Ian can help. He wrote most of this, so y'all thank him very much. He's wrote, written most of these policies for us. But it's it would not have public comment for me. You, legally, you don't have to. Right. I'm um, to suspend. But that would mean that they. Specifically, <laughs> addressing the public comment issue. Last time you suspended your bylaws, which uh, meant that you temporarily or permanently suspended public comment, I suspect temporarily. And the evolving policy, particularly electronically, uh, there are some places that are allowing people to comment either in a couple of different ways, one of which that they can be virtually comment, and that's policy we will be used in public hearings where they can sign up and actually speak to the board or send written comments to the board. That will be used in the public hearing. That doesn't address the public comment period. Some places are receiving public comments by voicemail and by uh, email, and those are being made part of the record. It's not at the public meeting, up until a certain length of time, you're allowed to send an email and say, Here, my comments about like these things, or send a voicemail. And so I think what we're seeking on the public comment part of it is whether you want to, uh, since you've suspended your bylaws, whether you want to allow for that type of public comment. There would be a public comment per se during the meeting, but there would be a chance for the public to send in comments. Okay. I still say, I suspend it all, go ahead and public comment. So during the term of the ordinance, you would want to suspend public comments, the public comment portion of the meeting. Right. Yes. So just to just to be clear, we wouldn't have the electronic methods, uh, Ms. Carter, that we discussed during a regular meeting. Only for public hearings. Okay. I think we should have that during public comment here meeting. That's just my opinion. We have four public hearings We have the um, VDOT six year plan. We have the reassess tax rate values and rates. We have the budget. And then we have the uh, grant public hearing for the CRC for the library. So that those probably that one won't bring a lot of comments, I wouldn't think. Um, I still have to get with VDOT to see if they're going to actually how we're going to handle that because we can't accommodate them actually coming in person. Maybe one we leave the room, uh, but that hearing has been scheduled. So. Um, Would it be possible to set a monitor outside? Like one of these, where they virtually do it or not? The government of social justice was deployed yesterday. Was limiting travel for the subsequent things that were accepted in that. Attendance of government meetings are not accepted. And also authorizes law enforcement and in this emergency ordinance, the emergency service management director to prohibit people from congregating. To have a monitor inside, in my opinion, it can be added in there, but you are inviting a violation of the governor's directive. Yeah. People call you to this clinic, and if they have, unfortunately, just internet service, they can do that. Now, we're working on trying to get that up to the dollar number where people can participate by, uh, or listen by phone. I mean, similar to like Zoom. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so, well, not so much Zoom, 
is the audio or video or combination. We're looking for a way, in all ways, by virtue of the scan, we push to YouTube. We are able to participate, participate sorry, with audio and video. Uh, we're looking for a way, if they don't have access to the internet, we do have a phone, they will be able to dial in and reach the audio portion. Mr. Chairman, um, just one last statement on this. I do think for me it's for us, I think we should consider, um, you know, during, during our public meetings, I think it's would be advantageous for us to maintain that email, public comment, and the and the telephone that's been uh, talked about by said and I know they work hard on on these things, and I think it's important that we keep that during all of our regularly scheduled meetings. Mr. Chairman, if I might, I it would be appropriate for staff to develop a policy for public comment, whether it would be and bring it back to you for your pool, and if in the end, it looks like it would be functioning very much uh, adverse effect, we would be doing that in the next year. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe. Supervisor Chambers, um, I don't think he put it in the form of a motion, was to suspend public comment. Right. I mean, my my addition to that, right. Mr. Chambers, would be if someone wants to make a comment, they're certainly welcome to email their representatives. So I mean, there's seven of us. We all represent the seven districts in this county. So if somebody wants to make a comment, surely they can make the comment to their to their supervisor, and then their supervisor can address it at that time, or they can answer that question. So really, there isn't a need for people to come in because the governor's order says stay at home. No, we are not saying anybody yeah. should come to the door. Right. We will say if they want to make a comment, they can send a comment by email, possibly expand it where they can send a audio in. But no, we're not, no way are we encouraging people to come to this bill. Absolutely. Right. The public Absolutely. comment is to be in some structured manner to be uh, added to the records of the They can do it by under two now. They can contact us by under four email. I I just recommend they contact their supervisor. I mean, that's what we're here for. It will open up the, the communication between the, right. uh, the citizens and their supervisor. Will it be part of the public record? Well, this is the record. If you introduce them to the public record, yes. Yes. 
giving you all the um, emergency, proposed emergency ordinance. Um, the strikes on the address that going down through um, what we've come up with on how to do business and continue in there for the public through this emergency declaration. The state law provides that there were anticipated certain times that there would be emergency situations and the board might not be able to meet it in an eventual way. Uh, this ordinance uh, takes a particular authority granted by the Code of Virginia and puts in place something called a continuity of government ordinance. It is an emergency ordinance. It remains in effect for 60 days. It can be readopted uh, from time to time, or you can advertise and make it a permanent ordinance that will expire whatever time you choose for it to expire, but not longer than six months after the government does away with the emergency. The way our answers that go through there really set forth the premise. We recite that the government had declared a disaster and emergency in the state of Virginia. That sort of triggers some things for the county to be able to do items. And it recites the president's uh, declarations concerning that. And then we go through that uh, you, you as a board had confirmed the action taken by the uh, director of management uh, services. Uh, Emergency manager here in the county that we are under a, uh, a global emergency, also. And that sort of sets the premise for the legal basis for the us to be able to adopt, uh, the board to adopt that. Now, the ordinance allows for some variance with state laws, county ordinances that are currently in place to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the presence of the employees when the spread of this uh, particular virus is going around. The operation of government facilities uh, can be controlled and managed. And we try to extend this where the board of supervisors, the school board, the planning commission, the board of equalization, the board of zoning appeals, and any other local or regional board that's created by this body or participates with this body can be covered by this type of action too, but it'll be up to them individually to decide what they choose to do. You know, at this time, no experts are recommending against gathering at and more than 10 people at a time and maintaining social distances. So this ordinance takes uh, notice of that and tries to incorporate that type of motion, motion into it. That's sort of the premise of where we are who's covered by section one. Section two, it says that any regular schedule or regular meeting of public body may be counseled by the chair if there's no essential business that needs to occur or if the conditions otherwise make it impractical to meet. Notice that the counseling has to be provided to the public body members and the public soon as practical. In other words, if you got nothing to do, you don't need to get together. Okay? And you're resting that uh, authority in the chair. In the alternative, and this is what we'll be doing with the next regularly scheduled meeting, I anticipate, any regularly scheduled or regular meeting of the public body may be held solely by electronic or telephonic means with third form of members physically present and third members of the public physically present, providing that the following occurs. Meeting has to be accessible to the public through live video or video on the county's or public body's website, dial in telephone number, or media platform. We anticipate that we will be able to provide it on a media platform and an hour and telephone number. The agenda and public notice for the meeting must do the statement that the meeting is being held using electronic means under this ordinance, contains specific information that have members of the public can access the meeting, and if there are any public hearings or public comments, specifically identify how members of the public can provide comments, including one or more of our emailing, writing by telephone, through social media platform, or by other electronic means. It is anticipated by the, uh, this policy that the emails, in writing, and telephone will be the way that you will receive comment during public hearings. The agenda for those meetings needs to be posted on the county's website. It needs four days prior to the meeting. Set the agenda for any regular scheduled meeting occurring within seven <coughs> days of the adoption of the bill having no schedule right now, so that part doesn't apply. The public hearings will work this following way. 
all the rooms of order with respect to requiring the name and home address of the con member, the comments related to the, the hearing of what they want to call the boot, that the appropriate limits on the number of comments per person, in other words, one comment per person, and the comments be a reasonable length, we use a three minute rule, if audible, and a 500 words, which the research tells me that's a good equivalent to a three minute uh, uh, call. Public bodies may allow public comment to be submitted by, again, the same things until three hours before the meeting starts. To a trade reference from noon, sent to the coast, uh, when the started said the coast meetings are scheduled at a certain time, but uh, they think they can process these. So if you change the time of your meeting, uh, to have a morning meeting, we got to have those comments got to be in about a certain time. Uh, and it goes forth to set the specific of the policy that uh, deals with the public comments. The idea here is to make sure that public on public hearings has plenty of ample opportunity to, to comment on those things that are scheduled for public hearing, even though they're physically not present. Five says that votes as you just did shall be taken by roll call. That means you uh, design to be called for each one of these, and you're going to have to. Record your vote, vote yes or no, and uh, the minutes of the, any of the comments you see will be part of the meeting. Now you can have special meetings, this is actually a special meeting, and you need to follow the forms of electronic communication used as above. Now, after today, uh, as we know, one of your members uh, is pretty uh, fragile at this time, and everybody's wishing him well. But if he chooses to, he'll be able to participate electronically in this meeting. Actually, any of you can participate electronically in this meeting, uh, rather than choosing to come to the building to be here. So uh, we'll proceed with that as we go forward. Uh, and you can certainly have emergency meetings as you need to. And if you have an agenda item, you can, as you have in the past, continue your meeting to reconvene to consider those items later on. Now that is the process of government in regard to the Board of Supervisors is how you'll be operating and how you can operate over the declaration of this emergency. Now in regard to public uh, buildings, facilities, real property and events, we're moving to Section 3. The Director of Management, Emergency Management is your county administrator. She's involved to restrict members of the public from entering this building or congregating inside, and that's what I spoke to when uh, Supervisor Matthews asked for their mom to be inside. The idea is to cut down on social contact and be respectful of social distance. So uh, that allows her to enforce that. It also allows her to cancel or postpone or reschedule any events that are in county on the buildings or property is necessary to ensure. Health, safety, and welfare of the public. Most places, and we are just operating on the same basis, have closed down county public spaces such as the parks and the areas like that, and that authority remains with her. The section four gives the powers of additional emergency management uh, director of mission for emergency management to do certain things with funding, contracts, and procedure, and other temporary actions. But each one of those she needs to bring back to you at some point to uh, to get your concurrence or your uh, uh, disagreement with. In regard to Section 5, because of this emergency, some deadlines gets hard to meet, and it sort of suspends deadlines, and you're not held to the strict part of, of the time frames that are required, but we will move forward as best we can observing those timelines that are required for various things. Particularly with zoning, where certain things happen to file for requests and it doesn't happen within a certain time, certain consequences come under that, those types of rules are suspended. If you choose to adopt this, or amend it and then adopt it, it will be effective from the moment you adopt it. Now, it is an emergency office uh, ordinance, so it will remain in place for 60 days unless you readopt it. And given that the government extended uh, his time frame for sometime in June, I suspect we'll be talking about this again and we may be able to tweak it a little bit and make it a little bit better. But that's the sum and substance of this emergency ordinance that we believe we would offer to you to adopt <coughs> to keep government functioning in an orderly fashion here in Buckingham County. 
That's what we all say. That's what we all say. So I believe we need to take action. I think that would be uh, it'd be appropriate for the board to make a motion if they choose to, and that's what you want to do, you to adopt this ordinance, having a discussion, you want to have a vote, and then take a roll call vote. I don't see what I'm going to try to adopt it. It's handed down from the governor's office, you know, so some of it, and we all get it all the way. I mean, we're going to adopt this also. Sorry, I just have one question, Mr. Chairman. Is the three hours enough for the public comments for you and your staff as far? Is that, is that adequate to process those? Yeah. Sure. Sorry, okay. I just want to make sure that it wasn't overly burdensome with the staff. And, and again, if something is pretty extensive that we, we have authority here to Maybe not me to deadline on a particular thing. Gotcha. Yes, information we have to do research on. Mr. Wright, you said that we can change the times of the meetings? We can. I mean, since we're closed to the public, you know, under the rules of COVID 19, you know, I, I guess that's something that we need to look at too, Ms. Carter. Is for the April meeting, we've already advertised these hearings for that time. So okay. we should move forward with that one, but yes. That's all I have. Do we have a motion to uh, adopt this uh, ordinance? Yes, we have a motion and a second. Yes, all right, motion and a second. Uh, call for the vote. Chair Bryant? Oh, yes. Vice Chair Matthews? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Miles? Aye. Yes. Chambers? Yes. Allen? Yes. Motion carried. Unanimous. Okay, but along the same lines of all of this, we can have another document that Carl pass out. I want Cody to come down because maybe I'm the emergency service director, but he's on the front line and he advises me and we discuss things, but he's out there out front with this. And so he can give you all some updates, I believe, but um, due to Pretty much an incident that happened yesterday of someone actually getting in the foyer that may have been exposed and then someone else coming in the foyer and such uh, from the public. Um, we're, we will, we're looking to lock that outside door and not even let people into the foyer and but put signs out at the door of what they need to do to contact us or help pay their taxes, how to conduct their business. Um, so that's, that's going to be part of, of what I would like to implement. But what um, Carl just passed out to you all is a policy direction. We believe, and, and Cody is stressing this too, we need to keep our employees healthy. Uh, he can tell you more about things that came up with yesterday with our cases. But um, what I have here, has everyone got it? is asking to regarding work schedules and you all grant me the authority and i will work with the emergency services manager and his direction and advice uh, to implement a schedule of employees of the board of supervisors to accomplish the essential functions of county government keeping in mind the health and safety of the citizens employees so, such implement may but shall in no way be limited to including working from home, flexible work schedules, assignments to alternate workplaces. The object is to protect the safety and health of the public and the employees while keeping government working at a level necessary to accomplish essential functions. Uh, with this, what some of the things we're looking at is perhaps, for an example, bring the maintenance people in at night, letting them clean it all at night. Uh, say we get into a situation where we have to close down. Miss uh, Ransom could come in at night and run payroll. Um, we would rotate anyone that can work from home certain days. We don't want everyone in here at one time. However, suppose that Jennifer's day is scheduled to be in the office and she needs off for another reason, then you use your sick leave or your vacation leave. As long as we are able right now, because we don't know where this is going to lead, to keep everyone working, uh, even to have phones calls forwarded to people's cell phones and messages forwarded that we can operate. But between Cody and I, we would work out a plan 
forward in this, but it, it kind of gets a little scary sometimes when we're all in here because we all could be put in quarantine at one time and then we couldn't really work. So uh, I will ask you in a few minutes to be considering this policy direction. But Cody, you want to talk with them too about how you feel about this and, and some of the things that, that's coming out. And by the way, have you gotten an update from the uh, I've been wanting um, to just give you guys a general <coughs> update. I received notification from the health department um, at 8.30, roughly a.m. yesterday, about our first confirmed case. Um, there was no other demographic information provided other than it's a 51-year-old male. And then we were all in a meeting kind of discussing exactly what you just alluded to when I got another phone call roughly 4 p.m. yesterday about a second confirmed case. Um, and uh, everybody else in the meeting can attest that uh, the health department contact stated that due to the results of their investigations into both of the Buckingham cases, it is likely that Buckingham will experience rapid community spread um, in comparison to the other localities affected. Let's be honest, Farmville has a few cases, but they're getting they're trickling in what the results of the investigation of the two cases here in Buckingham are indicating is that we will grow rapidly. Um, within, 72 hours. within 72 hours, we should expect to see quite a few more cases. Um, I've yet to get any more specific demographic information, but once I do, uh, Ms. Carter and I will discuss how to disseminate that. Um, in terms of public dissemination of information, we will do uh, press releases twice a week, Monday morning and Thursday morning, to update the public on case counts and counting efforts. If we do one for each new development, we'll probably get to do one, two, or three of that. So that's why we're not going to do that. Um, but you guys, I'm going to do that utilize email, and then we do contact those that don't buy a phone. We'll be updated on a case by case basis, just so you guys uh, have the answers for your constituents as necessary and things like that. Um, but to proceed into what Ms. Carter alluded to, you know, I just want to preface it by saying I don't think I need to convince any of you guys. You guys all seem very eager to uh, provide the health and safety of your employees, and we appreciate that. But, um, you know, if we don't do this, we'll likely end up just having to do it anyways because one person in this office gets it, and pretty much everybody that they've been in touch with, with which would be the entire office, would have to stop working for 14 days. So this would just provide us you know, some foresight and structured approach to doing what we're probably going to have to do anyway, so we don't do it. Um, but again, what you probably heard some localities going is staggering shifts, like half the shifts coming in and half not. In my opinion, I think I have some backing by Ms. Carter and Ian and Carl. Uh, that's not good enough. You know, if we still have five employees coming in and the other five come in the next day, those five still interact. So what, what we are pushing for uh, is ultimately, if you can stay at home and do your work, do that. And then if you have to come in for a certain reason, we will pick scheduled times that each department can be in here and then no other departments in the building. Um, and then in between each of those times, custodial staff would be scheduled as well to make sure things are clean properly. But we'll ensure emails are answered and we'll ensure that the phone calls are answered. We have to transfer the calls to certain funds. And I guess, you know, we're just planning because uh, we don't know where this is going. Mm -hmm. But in order to be able to serve the public efficiently, I think we need to take these steps now instead of waiting until it happens. And, and, and I think that Cody and Mr. Wright and, and all concerned you all, we've really been commended for uh, being proactive about this. Um, just to see what happened yesterday and then the predictions is enough to see that we are, this is serious. Ms. Uh, Chairman, uh, it's a pastor, the pastor of the church here in Oak Hill. He got the virus. He's in the hospital now in Kirkland. I talked to his wife. He don't live in Buckingham County, but he's pastor of the church in Buckingham County, which is Oak Hill Baptist Church. And the wife told me he's on the critical list. I think it, yes, it is awesome, Mr. Wayne. You bring up a good point. It's important to stress that while we've been officially advised of two positive cases, mm -hmm. we are not advised about all of the people who have been who are yeah. in the process of being tested, awaiting results, which latest information suggests that a good test takes up to a week to get. Mm -hmm. That's projected to extend out to two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, so somebody, a healthy person 
to get it and get over it before they ever knew they had it. Okay? So, you know, it's really important to know that we are only officially known as a positive cases, which take a while to, to know about. Uh, there are, without a doubt, quite a few individuals in this county who are being tested actively, are on self-quarantine, but we are not receiving official word of you know, People like that, people in that gentleman's congregation, probably fall into that demographic. Um, so, I've got to ask Mr. Ray a question before we go on this. It's Ian. Ian. Why can't you? I got a question. He's coming. Why, why is it you, you had two, two cases that are positive in the county in the last day? Right. And all of a sudden, it's going to ramp up to several. What, what is the reason for that? I mean, so again, I, I don't know the specific information on the two patients. I will be privy to that soon. Um, but what the health department advises is that the two patients that they, they have done, they have begun their investigation to the patients. And what their investigation reveals is that both of the patients have come into contact with quite a few people from our county since contracting the virus, basically. And, and large group settings. Yes. Are, they, are they citizens of Buckingham County? They are. Okay. And they, you know, and, and they use the grocery stores, they use the dollar stores, and it's right. a considerable amount of people in these two families, I believe. Right. So, so that, that's how they do their investigations and advise us. Right. I, I feel safe saying uh, that the individuals are of the same family, and they had some family gatherings that is is they are the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had some family gatherings that just like you. Right. Like I said, this guy, the pastor of the church, you don't live in Byron again, but he's pastor of the church over there, and he got that for a while. That's the best. Okay. Well, oh, right. yeah. um, the guy called me last night, and they wanted to set the service down the church. I don't know if this is And the pastor said, not going to set the church down. Anything, if it's old or 10 people, can they do anything about it? They, they don't want to go to church. They, they want to stay away from it. He said, we're going to have it. But that's the, he, he don't live in Buckingham County either. He passed in Buckingham County. If all the governor's direction, they should not gather to do that. But if he do do it, can they lock him up? I said, put him in jail. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to be... Hold on. Oh, okay. Let me finish for you. He, he is subject to the sanctions that were imposed by the governor's direction. Okay. Well, thank you. I'll call them the I didn't mean to interrupt you, uh, Reverend Cambridge, but I'll I, 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 for you. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll move that we um, adopt the policy direction as recommended by the county administrator. Right. Second. Motion raised a second. Yes, Mr. Second. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I offer the vote. Roll call. Chairman, Ryan. Yes. Vice Chairman Matthews? Yes. Brian? Yes. Miles? Yes. Chamber? Yes. Adam? Yes. Is there any other items pertaining to this agenda that you all want to discuss? Okay. It has to be it has to be pertaining to these things because all seven are not here. I don't think I would like to say is if you know somebody gets maybe stay at home or something. Hopefully nobody loses any money because of any of this because well, it ain't their fault because they're off. Like, we all know where this is going. Uh, that's why at first we're trying to have everyone still do their jobs. Um, and again, I said that if, if they need all for other reasons and they will use their vacation to clean, uh, but if they are off at our direction, right. they will get paid. Um, and we hope to maintain that. Again, we don't know where it's going. Um, so, because it, what you all see in here, there's a lot of regular federal regulations. If some, we send someone home for quarantine or for whatever, then you have to pay them 14 days under the, the governor's um, right. direction. So, so we, we're going to follow all those things and we hope to keep everyone working. Um, as we see how all this unfolds, you all may want to consider some deadline extensions and details or taxes or whatever. We'll talk about that in April at our April meeting um, because we want to see how this is going. Uh, we know it'll have impact, but we don't know what that is right now. Okay. Um, 
I got a question for you. I noticed, uh, you know, I'm trying to keep up with the news every day, the, the national news and the state local news, which I consider the, the state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. But it just seems to me that this, the governor and whoever's taking the county on these on these cases of uh, COVID-19, it took forever to find out the numbers, so in my opinion, it just like it drug out. It started back in January, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's already March, and we're just finding out some of these cases. Are they updating us on hot spots in the state of Virginia? And how is this? A, you know, I kind of like to know that question. What's going on with that COVID? They they will uh, update us uh, of the area. Well, they will give us um, the specific address and name of the person, honestly. I don't want to know that. So they will talk about Farmville, Charlottesville, yeah. Richmond. I want to know what's going on in the Yeah, area. like a geographic map. Yeah, there's a, there, they give you each. Right. The, so the Virginia Department of Health is broken up into districts, and each district handles like four or five counties typically. And, and they usually kind of post together right. as a lump sum. You know, uh, our health district, Piedmont Health District, experienced its first COVID-19 death yesterday and they did a press release about it. Um, they don't get any more specific than, than other than the fact that it was a Piedmont Health District County. Um, so, to, so Virginia Department of Health will at least tell you to what district some of their instances are falling within. Yeah. And, and on their website, they've even got a map that shows each county and their case count. They do have that. Yes, there's a map it, it will get each county and their damage. How often do they update that? Every day at noon. Every, Every day at noon. Uh, I, 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 I sorry, you email it to me or something because I'd like to keep up with that. We can show you where you can go to find it every day. And uh, well, I see what I'd be way behind. Someone could be sick a week, maybe two weeks. We don't. Uh, then go to the doctor and start taking another week. Oh, I want to find out where they're sick. And two of us are at Dallas. They don't spread it. Probably, what, two and a half weeks ago, we might have 40 cases in Virginia. Yeah. And we're over 1,000 now. 40 that we knew about. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. We don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know how many people so think they're right. sick and quarantine themselves. Yeah. Well, yeah. like Cody said, I mean, by the time somebody gets tested, they could have had the COVID-19 and have been cured of it. Right. So, I mean, it's still got a still going to pop up as a as a case but that individual may be cured of it by the time their test results come right out. Yeah. right and, and although there is in the news today about a new test of five to ten minutes but working with the health department we don't know how accurate they are we, we were advised that these two confirmed cases were tested with a test that is accurate it so, takes longer but it's more reliable the yeah. test is extremely quick but there are a lot of false positives and false negatives with it to the point that they don't really disseminate the results of those tests for reliable. So we don't, we don't know. I guess misapproved the results of using zinc and D3 vitamin. So I mean, to get ahead of the virus, if you, so they're looking at a lot of studies. Warm water. <laughs> and warm water, anything warm to drink, mm -hmm. whether it's water, coffee, soup, whatever it may be, but those things seem to uh, go slow the pace of that stuff. That's why the devil kept the bus. I want to say. 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 I it's great. It's fabulous. We're ahead of the curve, and it's thanks for the hard work the NIT these the our staff. Jamie. And I'd like to thank you all very much. Yeah, Jamie and, and working with EM and Excel and Coral has provided this for us in a very short period of time. Absolutely. So we really, you know, we would be kind of in a situation if we could not have this to reach out to the public. Okay, Jamie, you're back on my good list. Oh, that's the reason we hire all these good people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, let's see what's uh, Chairman Bryant brought up about the um, tire day for the 18th. That's canceled. Okay. Because uh, that we're encouraging people to come out. Can we just say postponed instead of just outright canceled? 
Um, yeah, I, I mean, that is yeah, a wonderful I think thing. I, I told Lynn to just not yeah, have it right yeah, now. To kind of cut down on the litter, yeah. Yeah. maybe, mm -hmm. hopefully, in the early fall, yeah, when this is over with, I hope. Basically, the same thing, also. Yeah, yeah. I hope. I was on a big one night in the gas that program be something to too. The other guy got there, he made a mistake, he said, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I just can't encourage people enough. Social distancing. Yeah. I mean, you know, you drop by food line and that's the hangout. Yeah, and I you need to understand that that's not a hangout. This is live Seriously. streaming, so you're saying yes. this to the Absolutely. public. Absolutely. Please so practice your social distancing. This is, this, we're on live. Listen to go. Think about other people. Absolutely. Yep. And we're going to get through this together. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. We'll come out stronger. Yep. We've got to listen to the professionals and follow the governor's rules and what the county is saying. And what they provide and, and other and it's in relation to this so I can and do this in, in relation to like some of the restaurants and the hair shops and all that's been closed down I've got numerous calls can I do this can I do that I have to refer them elsewhere because that we do not govern that right and I can tell them what I know they should be doing but local law enforcement is supposed to be enforcing those things so uh, just in case you get any questions you know, can I open my shop up for a few hours tonight if I only have one person in there? You know, your, your business has to be shut down for that. So we're telling them what we do know, but um, it, it's, it's a very sad thing for these sure. It's their Absolutely. income. Well, specifically, what you, know, you, you hear so many different versions that you, you're trying to, you know, go through it in your mind what's going on. The governor has now extended this social meeting status to June, is that correct? Or I mean, where mm -hmm. 10 people cannot gather. I think so. And then non-essential businesses are not to open. And that's, you're opening yourself up to a fine if you do that, is that right? Yes, I, I believe he said a, a one, class one. Uh, that's what it's going to be. So who's enforcing? Is the sheriff kid? Law enforcement is supposed to be enforcing So non-essential would, would be what I mean, what I mean, yeah. there was a list. Yeah, there. Yes. there was yeah, a list in this order. Okay. And um, we, need to, we need to really put something like that on our website, and maybe even in the paper when you advertise for this stuff here on what is actually able to be open. I mean, I don't. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to have any confusion about this. You don't want somebody not to be ignorant of what's going on because they're either not watching TV or they're not keeping up the speed. But that, that's very important for the public to understand just like what uh, Mr. Bryan just talked about is you know practice social distancing but if they don't know and they're not keeping up with this stuff you know ignorance is not an excuse but you know some people are just not as technology savvy as as you or me or whoever else it may be. And we are, we are referring businesses to Southside uh, Longwood Business yes, Assistance. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, we are offering that they can, they will, of course we're not asking them to go to, to Farmville to the office, but to call them, get online with them. Sherry will lead them right to everything. And if they do not register, they will not get anything. Exactly. So that's the, what we're trying to encourage them to, and Nikki's been reaching out to, Register your business. Yes, there's a lot of information they want on your business, including your financials. But if you don't register, right. you're not going to get any assistance. Um, and the chamber is uh, mm -hmm. And just before I left home about the stimulus money, uh, one of the comments was uh, the, something about the government issuing paper checks. They're not going to issue paper checks right now. And they said that you know it's a direct deposit. And it takes up to about three weeks to get it done. So if you want it, you better start getting with them, get them routing numbers and stuff. So, and that was on the Today Show. So, so the paper checks are a the pass. So, you don't have anything else on I'm this happy. matter? No matter. Okay, the next item on the agenda is to discuss about economic development um, and Nikki will address that right now. Good morning Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, 
Under agenda today, um, section D is discussion concerning prospective business or industry or the expansion of the existing business or industry where no previous announcement has been made. I would ask that we defer um, this item to the next meeting. Do you need a motion, Ms. Um, or, uh, board, but, uh, you do not need to just consensus yeah. board good mother, right? and, and I, I might comment that um, once we discuss this publicly we, we can't yeah, go back to the session so we right. want to refer in case we have any little things to iron out with you all right. so because we have to remember your recommendation recommendation would need to go to the NBA so but we hope in April that we'll have um, a proposal for you all to use to schedule here. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Keep us out of closed session. Keep us out of closed session. Yeah, right. Closed session. Once it's publicly announced. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Is it? Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? In the action. Thank you. Next meeting. April the 14th. Well, this is a special meeting, so I believe we adjourn. April the 14th? Right? 13th. 13th. And no oh, We got to. This is the one. Yes. Oh, my. Yes. 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 Yes.